Okay, so let's look at uh, what's called zero knowledge proof or ZKP. And ZKP is all about uh, proving that someone knows some information without actually giving the information away. So we'll apply this to the Diffie Hellman key exchange method and see how it actually works. So as an example of zero knowledge proof, uh, we can look at uh, uh, an, uh, an example where Bob sends Peggy into a cave. So as we can see here, the cave has two roots, A and B. So what Peggy must prove is that she knows the secret uh, password or passphrase to open up uh, an entrance that connects A and B together. This is a bit like uh, in the story of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, where Alibaba discovered a secret phrase, open sesame, which opened up the cave of the, the thieves. So let's say we want uh, Bob, we want uh, Bob to verify that Peggy actually knows uh, the secret passphrase to open up uh, the connection between A and B. So first he allows uh, Peggy to go into the cave and select whichever route that she wants to take, so either A or B. Then Bob will shout into the cave and look here at the entrance and ask Peggy to come back through that uh, passageway. So he might shout uh, B. So if Peggy reveals herself back and walks back along B, then there is a chance that she knows the secret passphrase because she could have went along A and then Bob asks her to reveal herself through B and then she would uh, open up the secret passageway and go back along B. But obviously if she had been in B and Bob asked her to go back to B, then she has not verified herself. But Bob continues to do this and every single time if if Peggy is able to reveal herself through the secret cage, uh, through the secret passageway, then Bob will increasingly uh, know that that Peggy knows um, the secret passphrase. Another example, if you're interested, this is what's called the three hat uh, problem. In this case, we have a number of hats and we color them with three colors. And we make sure that for the connections between the hats on a vertex, that there is the there is a different colour which connects to each uh, each of the hats. So in this case, it's not possible to have red here uh, because that would have two colours with the same hat colour. What we then do is cover up all the hats and then reveal uh, two of the the, the hats uh, to the verifier and the verifier should actually know the whole of the map if the if that's the secret and actually reveal the colors that are connected someone who does not know the map will not be able to determine the right colors one of the most well-known methods is what's called non-interactive random oracle access. In this way we have a shared secret. So the shared secret is a value of x. So in discrete logarithms what we do is we, we use a generator and a prime number and we raise g to the power of x and then take mod of p. So in this way we have a shared secret between Alice and Bob of y is equal to g to the x mod p. Alice cannot determine the value of x that uh, Bob has actually used, 
But what she wants to do is to continually prove that he actually knows the value of x, which caused this value here. So to prove that, he creates what's called a non-interactive random oracle. And in this case, it's this hash here. He creates a random number, v, and then he defines what's called the commitment. In this case, it's called t. So he takes the g value that we had before, the generator, and then raises that to the power of v, the random number. He then takes the challenge, which is the he takes the value of g, the value of y, and also the value of t that is just calculated, and then creates an overall hash. It might be two hash two five six or MD5 or something, but he creates what's called a challenge. He is now challenged with this hash to be able to create the response. The response becomes V, the value he's just uh, created. Take away C times X. X is the value that is secret to him. And then we take mod P. P is, the prime, is a prime number. He then returns back the response and the challenge R and C. On the other side, uh, Peggy, uh, Alice, checks. She takes the G value and raises it to the power of R. And she takes the Y value and raises that to the power of the cipher. And if we do this, then G to the power of R and Y to the power of C is equal to G to the power of V minus CX times Y to the power of C. But y to the power of c is actually g to the power of x to the power of c. And in logarithms, as we know from John Napier, when we'd raise g to the power of x, g to the power of x to the power of c, that's the same as saying g times cx. So what we end up with is v minus cx plus cx. That should be an x then. These two cancel out. And we end up with g to the power of v, which is t. And this is this value here. This then we're able to calculate as a value of t. So Alice is able to compute her value of t there. And we then do a quick check. Alice retakes the g value. She re takes the y value that she calculated and she'll use her own t that she's just computed and use that to create the hash. If the c value here is the same as the c value here then we know that Bob has proved that he knows x. So let's see if we can uh, look at that as an example. Okay, so there's a G value of 13 and 11. Let's see, the secret is 13. Well, we'll make the secret 15. And we compute. There's the values that we get here. And there's the values that we're going to send over. And we actually prove that this is uh, correct. So the little Python code is here, if you're interested. So there's the... There's the hash that, that we create uh, for the cipher. And then we eventually prove that <coughs> the that uh, Bob knows the value of x. So if we want to advance this a little more, we could uh, apply this into the Diffie-Hellman method. So in the Diffie-Hellman method, uh, we have generate Bob generates x, a random value, and Alice generates y, also another random value. Bob calculates g, that's an agreed value, to the power of x, mod p, and Alice does the same thing with her random value, g to the power of y, mod p. They then exchange the values, and Bob calculates the secret key from the value he received from Alice, and raises it to the power of x. So basically what we end up with is g to the power of x times y mod p on either side. 
But let's say we want to challenge, Alice wants to challenge Bob to show that he knows the value of, of x. <coughs> so in this case, what we want to do is to show that Bob understands or knows the value of x uh, through a challenge. So we'll look at a little bit of code here. And this code here allows us to do our checking of the secret values x and y. So let's take an example, 17 and 13. So we create uh, some shared values and we have a check with the secret, the challenge and the response. And Alice can check that. So if you're interested, the code is actually defined uh, here. So in this case, this is our, our commitment. And then we're taking our, our hash uh, to create our, our challenge. Okay, and then we do uh, what we showed before. There is the, the value that uh, we used, the V minus, uh, and we look back to see our little diagram. Okay, so this was V, our secret, minus R C times X. Okay, and this was uh, this is uh, that part there. Okay, so if you're interested, here's the code here, Python code that you can actually run to be able to implement this. Okay, so that's been a very basic introduction to Zero Knowledge Proof. Uh, and also how it would integrate into the Diffie-Hellman method. Okay, thank you.